Well, good morning and welcome to City Line. It is such a pleasure and a privilege to be in your home. We have a great show ahead of us on this Thursday, September 13th. Later on in the hour, we'll be talking with Tacoma Community House, and they are here to talk about their flavor program. And uh, this is your chance to sample some really beautiful food that we have here in Tacoma, and especially some pho, which is one of my favorites. And then we'll be talking with Associated Ministries. They are here to talk about some of the community meetings that they've been having that have been focusing around the state of emergency of homelessness here in the city of Tacoma and they are going to report upon the feedback and what they have learned from your input. And then Emergency Food Network, Helen and uh, Claire are here this morning uh, to talk about what's happening here at the Emergency Food Network and uh, this is also going to be one of the last times that we get to see Helen as Executive Director so we'll talk about that as well. And then with me right now are two fabulous individuals so they're here to talk about the Squally Watershed Festival. And if you are new to Tacoma or new to the Northwest and don't know what this festival is, well, as my grandmother would say, get out some paper and pencil, honey, because this is one you don't want to miss. So please join me in welcoming Mr. Daniel Hull. You are still the director of Nisqually Reach Nature Center. Welcome back. Glad to be here. Good to have you here. And then you brought with you this beautiful woman, Emily McCartan. You are the Nisqually River Council Program Coordinator. Welcome to City Line. That's right. Thanks for having me. Great to have you. And I'm going to have you here more often, okay? Great. Deal, deal. So, Emily, speaking of this, um, as I said, if you're new and don't know about this festival, um, let's kind of just get it out there. When did the festival start and where was it originally held? So the Nisqually Watershed is down south of JBLM in the South Sound area. And it, the festival started in 1989. This is our 29th year. It began in the city of Yelm and it moved to the Billy Frank Jr. Nisqually National Wildlife Refuge, um, where we're still holding it today. Fabulous. And why did it move? Uh, I, the refuge is a, a great community yes. venue that um, just offers so much. And it's a wonderful place to celebrate all of the, the great work and partnerships that are in the watershed. Absolutely. So let's get into some logistics here since I, I tasked my audience with taking notes. When is the Nisqually Watershed Festival? It is September 29th. That's last Saturday of the month, 10 to 4. Nice. And and you mentioned it's already held at the, it's been moved to the Nisqually Watershed. Yes. Um, and then let's talk about uh, uh, a walkthrough here, Mr. Daniel. So I want you to walk me through the festival and tell me what is it all about. And I think we have some beautiful pictures here we're going to show as well. Well, as in years past, yes. uh, the Watershed Festival is a great place to get people together. I always say it's really kind of people-centric. It's about the community. It's about people coming together. One of the things that I like to share with folks, really, is the importance of community mm -hmm. and being able to connect that community to the resources we have in Nisqually. We have a beautiful watershed. It's deeply protected by community members, by agencies. And when I'm thinking about some of those agencies, uh, the partnerships that come together, one of the things that I like to share with folks is um, Nisquamly. <laughs> <laughs> Say yeah, that again Nisquamly. for us. It's I a family of that. Nisqually organizations that come together and sponsor this. You know, you've got the Nisqually River Foundation. You've got... Uh, the Nisqually River Education Project, you've got the Nisqually River Council, you've got the Nisqually Tribe, you've got Nisqually Reach Nature Center, where I'm coming from, uh, and also as a big sponsor uh, for years, uh, Tacoma Power has been helping yes. us. Um, you know, once again, getting all these different people to come together to share the beauty uh, of one of the richest watersheds. I believe in the Pacific Northwest. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I love that. Nis, nis, nis family. Nis family. Nis family. Nis yeah. family. I think you need to patent that, or I think you also need to have t-shirts. I, you know, I, that's coming. Wouldn't that be? When we, when we get one, we'll, I'll, I'll make sure to get you. Well, when you get yeah. one, you got to bring one in and then I'll put yeah. it back on the show again, because mm -hmm. that's just such a fabulous name. So 
what you mentioned the educational component, which I think is so important, and those are great pictures, by the way, especially the big salmon. I love the big salmon. I, every year I look for it. So what educational attractions can our visitors expect to see this year? There's so many great things. Yeah, there I is. mean, this you know, is all which, about which ones do you really want to just focus on? And it is. So everything there is designed to give people a better understanding of the watershed. Mm -hmm. You know, but uh, specifically, there's going to be a, a dogfish dissection. Uh, so it's a type of shark. Yeah. So oh, I've seen them, and they're really scary yeah. looking. They have those 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 bad little pokey things that come out of. That's a tentacle. Well, word. so they they actually have yeah spines. It's, it's called the yeah. spiny dogfish uh, that come out of the dorsal and and and, and the uh, rear fin. I'm trying to remember what that one's called, but anyways. Uh, <clears throat> And what's really great is being able to connect people with some of the different things that they can actually experience within the watershed and the estuary that's there. There's a storytelling salmon tent. Obviously, mm -hmm. the big fish, uh, yes. fin the big fish, you can go inside that fish. There's storytelling that happens in this big inflatable salmon. Um, so many different things, really, to actually connect people to what's happening. Uh, oh, and I just have to mention, too, yes, being able do. to make being able to make a fish print on a shirt. With a real fish. Real With fish. a real fish. Yeah. You know, so and these are- Many of us have, or some of us have never even touched a fish. I mean, I'm not talking about my generation, but younger generations haven't touched a real fish yet. So this is their chance. There are all kinds of opportunities to get some hands-on experience, whether it's doing arts and crafts that kind of give you a sense of the um, the wildlife and the interaction of uh, all of the components of the ecosystem, touching fish, looking at an eagle's nest. Exactly. Dan, I want you to focus on uh, one of the educational components that our educators could walk away with. Because I love when teachers go down there and they go, ooh, this would be a great thing for me to teach in uh, ecology or in the Washington State history that I have to teach. So... Uh during this event, uh, there'll be uh, several nature walks mm. that are going to connect people to, um, you know, what is available at the Billy Frank Jr. and Nisqually National Wildlife Refuge. Uh, themed things that can cover the birds, can cover some of the different habitats that are encompassing that area. Um, there's a there's a lot of different things for teachers, but it's not just for teachers really. It's right. it's for the community, it's for the children, the kids, the parents, uh, the adults. Uh, mm -hmm. Just all about connecting. It's for uh, learners. It's for lifelong. <laughs> That's right. We love that. Okay, so. And in order for us to be a lifelong learner, we have to be able to eat and have food. That's always a, you know, it's paramount on my list. So, Miss Emily, let's talk about what kind of food we're going to have this year because you guys always hit it out of the park. Headline item is always the salmon barbecue. Yes! yes. So you'll get fresh salmon grilled with all the fixings and sides that you want. Um, we also got a Hawaiian barbecue station this year. We'll have corn on the cob and cotton candy, gourmet popcorn, and always coffee and treats. So there will be Get lots to snack on. out. Every year it gets better. I don't think you had uh, the caramel candy last time you were here. We? I think or a new one. It's a new one. Well, I, I like yeah. that a lot. Add That's some a, spice. Yeah. Yeah, it's in spice. So, Emily, there are two stages, and uh, in, there are two stages in two places. Well, one in one place, one in another, and there's events. So, what are the events, and what's the schedule? So, we've got all kinds of performances and um, events from science to art. So, the Olympia Highlanders will be starting us off yes. with a performance and walk through the festival. Um, we'll have live uh, raptor shows, opportunities to, to see wildlife up close. Um, the salmon dissection that Daniel mentioned will be off in our amphitheater stage. Um, the Olympia Mountaineers will be talking about do's and don'ts for hiking and great ways to get out and experience nature that are safe and respectful of the environment. Um, the Nisqually Canoe family will be performing um, from the Nisqually tribe oh, to yes. make sure that we're recognizing that piece of the That's heritage, which right. is so important in our watershed. 
um, and uh, lots of great opportunities. We'll also be recognizing the Nisqually Stream Stewards, which is a volunteer program of class of people who have gotten educated about the watershed, um, and we'll then be committing to volunteering with our in, within the Nisqually over the next year. And then uh, at noon, there'll be uh, um, awards for the students, grades first through sixth, who have contributed to the Nisqually Poster Contest. So they'll design posters for the Watershed Festival, one of them yes. is a poster winner, and then there's a grade level winner and it's a great chance to see the creativity that kids have I put into that. this. And all that's on the website too that you've you been showing underneath your beautiful faces. So that was people a really can, good job. Yeah, great job on that, sister. So, okay, both of you. What are your favorite memories of this festival? And Emily, you are new to the festival. You've been there last year. Mm -hmm. Of course, you are old hat. So we have a nice perspective here of newbie versus veteran. So what, what's your favorite memory so far? I think last year getting to see all of the, um, just all the interactives and how much went on and how enthusiastic people were to, were to be there, uh, even during the times of the day when it was pouring rain. This is a rain or shine event. We're Northwesterners. That's we right. can deal with it. Come on. Um, it's water. <laughs> watching kids, especially do the salmon printing and get their hands dirty, get to touch a fish, get all to right. paint a fish and decorate it and make something creative that really um, they get to take home and celebrate all year round. Great memory. What about you? You know, every year uh, coming to the event, it's exciting uh, to see all the partners come together. But the biggest part of the story are the folks that come uh, to the event uh, and, and share stories. Uh, there are so many different venues for people to connect. Mm -hmm. uh, and I am so busy during the event. Yes. It, it's always, you know, I'm like, what's happening here, here, here? You know, so, you know, so many people doing so many things, but the interactions that I have over the years, seeing people uh, through rainstorms, windstorms, mm -hmm. beautiful sunny days, awesome food, to see the smile on somebody's face when they're leaving an event and you know you've made that connection. Um, yeah, that's it's the richest thing. It yeah. is. So uh, there's such there's much more information about the Critter Corridor. I want to encourage our audience to uh, log on and look at. And also there are site tours that people want to take with you. Uh, but in this last minute here, I want to ask the question of what do you need in order uh, to make this successful at this point? Well, one of the things that we need always and. There's a, a an army of volunteers yes. uh, that help us. Uh, when you're dealing with uh, hundreds of thousands of people coming into one area, shuttles coming in from River Ridge High School, that's where you're parking. Mm -hmm. uh, our volunteers are the backbone uh, of being able to help this event. So We need volunteers. Yeah, and if people can, that would be great. I Contact love that. Us. Bring the whole family, bring your office, mm -hmm. bring your local nonprofit that you volunteer with because uh, that's a win-win for everybody. I love that you took time out of your busy day before this event where every minute counts to come sit on the comfy couch with me and talk about this. Um, please come back again and again. You two are just the bee's knees. And I wish I wish for whatever the weather is going to be that it will just be and that people will come with full hearts and leave with full tummies and full spirits. How's that? Sounds wonderful. That does. Yeah. All right. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you. Thanks You're for welcome. having us. After just a little bit of musical chairs, we are going to have Helen and Claire here from the Emergency Food Network in these seats. You don't want to miss that. We'll be right back. Shh.